rolling. Welcome to the Ryan Joseph Show. Today, I took the man behind the curtain <laughs> and put him in front of the camera. The man that you've heard many times on our my two episodes, or no, three, because I think the other one's coming out now. Gary Faust, a man I don't know well, but just in the short time I met him, he's like a brother. Yeah, I'm a stand-up guy. Dude, you have a, um, a pinup girl on your arm too, right? Like, yeah. I have one on my arm. It's like... Uh, oh, you didn't show the titties, though. Oh, you showed one titty. Yeah, but the fucked up thing is, it's like... See, I, my, this is my first tattoo, is my sister's name, because she died. And then I got this, is it, like, homage to her. <laughs> and it turns out, people are always like, well, why is she naked? I'm like, I know. <laughs> I, sh- I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> she, my, my sister is naked on my arm. But no, because it's like, she has a tiger, right? And my sister... That's my mom. Really? Yeah, you just met her downstairs. Yeah, I, I banged her real quick when She's I was going to the bathroom. <laughs> Why do you think I was like, hey, I gotta go to the bathroom first for this? Yeah, <laughs> that's what you were doing. I gotta go to the bathroom, up. Gary. You son of a bitch. Um, I think I'd be a good... So step- anyways, yeah, I'd your be sister's good, hot. I'd be a good stepdad. <laughs> What's up, Dad? Where's your dad? Oh, man, my dad's... Um, He's working at Home Depot. Like, are they still married? No, fuck no, dude. D- divorce? Each of them. Each of my parents have been married and divorced three times. That's th- that's you know healthy to like be able to like move on that well and get married again. Yeah, isn't it marriage? I think marriage is pretty cool because it's like you make the woman stand up in front of all her friends and family and say, "I swear I won't leave him until I die." Or no, and then you rename her to, you know, it's like yeah. you, it's like what is more satisfying is like, hey, here's your fucking daughter, and now I renamed this bitch and she won't leave me. Until she dies. Yeah. Well, it's embarrassing, though, when you've been married three times and every time you do that, the woman leaves you <laughs> before you die. I know. You got to, like, not believe it. You know, nowadays, yeah. do you take this man Dude, to, to be your lawfully bullshit. wedded husband and never leave before, unless sickness or death? I do. Yeah, right. Yeah. Then what happened with Bill before me? <laughs> Whores. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I become well, let me mis- ask you this. Any woman that marries... A man that has been married before, why would you ever marry that woman? It's damaged goods. Yeah, what guy is that dumb? Have you ever had sex with a woman that's had kids before? Yeah, I have a what kid. What is it? Is it? Is with, it? Uh, I, had, I, f- I fucked my baby mama after she gave birth. Okay. I guess it's not the same because it's like your kid and stuff, but like, so it feels better that you're like, it's your kid that you're feeling like the, you know, your kid went where your dick's going, you know? You're like, when oh. You put it that way, you're it's like, weird. Yeah, you're like, my, my, oh, my son. Pass through where my dick is now. I'm blowing a load, right? These sacred canals. Yeah, but it's different though because it's like I had never done that, and I imagine is it like just as tight, or it's blown out? Um, I think that when 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 women have babies that are really big, it gets like that. You know, it yeah, gets, it gets blown out. I would never have sex with a woman that's had a kid. I don't yeah, think I'm ever gonna have sex again. You're probably better off. I want to start semen retention, dude. I've been doing that. Yeah, it fucking works. Yeah. I, I gave up on it at the pandemic. But, like, that whole no-fat movement and all that shit, it's fucking legit. Well, I, have, I don't really watch porn or jerk off. Uh, I, I, when I had a girlfriend, we fucked all the time. But what I've been doing lately is just taking pain pills and hanging out and working. It, it's on. way better for you. It's way better. So. Yeah, healthier. Like the just, only, to, just to be in your zone, you know? The only downside is that I am... Uh, constipated a lot the thing about pain pills i used to be addicted to them when i was in my they're good my 20s i would be um yeah they're great that's why you take one and then the (laughs) fucking kicks in and you're just like oh this is the way life should be this is the way i should always feel right but that's called drug addiction yeah well it always runs out i mean you you always i don't know it always goes away mexico and getting more right but then you have to take more and more to get the same high Oh no, you get you can't do it like that. You gotta you gotta take them in. A, you have to have sort of a, a routine a regimen, if you will. <laughs> yeah, if someone like me is like an addict, like I wouldn't be able to. It's like I have no control. Over I use it. drugs as tools to help me be more efficient. I think some drugs I could do that with, but not with like opiates. Uh, well, the re- the real re- the real reason I'm I st- am taking painkillers is because I have sciatica, yeah. so I have like really bad pain in my left leg. Sure. Yeah, that's what the um, homeless guy told me that I was passing by. He was shooting up. He's like, he's like sciatica. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of 
course. <laughs> okay, well, let's not talk about what happened when I meth was were like, <laughs> when I was I, under the bridge yesterday. Yeah, meth heads are like, oh no, it's just because I, I, I'm um, sleep too much. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, like so, is it like not as tight like after you have sex with the? Um, no, I think it was, it was probably about the same. Yeah. I would always know, though. I'd be like, it's just not as tight. Well, that's why God made, gave woman an asshole, you know, for us, you know. Well, that's what I thought until they had the whole gender neutral bathrooms. And I was like, oh, women shit. I thought that was just like a, like a place for us to go during that one time of the month. Oh, shit. Dude. I was like, this whole time, I thought that was for us. Um, I, I don't think there's much of a difference, though, personally. Maybe if what? you have a couple of kids. Uh, not you, but a woman. If a woman had a couple of kids or a really large child, <laughs> dude, I know. I heard this story. I used to work with this port, uh, Puerto Rican guy named Munji. <laughs> it's old, dirty Puerto Rican. Munji. Yeah, he'd be like, yo, bro, man, I know those fucking girls. Is that short for something? I don't know, mange or Munji. <laughs> but he was just a dirty old man, right? Like we'd be working at University of Florida when I was a painter. I would paint houses. I used to paint or. We would do commercial work too, and we were painting at the University of Florida. And these hot like girls would be walking by, and he's like, "Bro, I would let that fucking girl shit on my fucking face, bro." And I'd be like, "I know, me too." But <laughs> really, no, no. But he was just like, "He was a painter." He was just a dirty old man. He really just drank, and he held the ladder for me while I went up there. <laughs> and he's like, "Bro, <laughs> I know this fucking girl, man. This girl, she, this white girl, she." dated a black guy man uh, and uh she married a car salesman man <laughs> and he had to fucking pay to get her a pussy like uh fix you know what i mean because that shit was blown what? out yeah Appar <laughs> apparently like <laughs> apparently like she was like she used to date a black guy and then it was like dude fucking um uh someone told me that uh his cousin uh, someone that we know his cousin um is a pimp and his cousin won't let and the cousin's a black dude but he won't let his girls fuck any black guys because he wants to make sure that shit's tight you know what sounds I mean? kind of racist he, he cares that's reverse racist. no man it's his fucking product his product has to be good you know what i mean i mean he's black and he's being racist against black people uh, isn't that reverse racism black something? people can't be racist. uncle tomming I've black heard. people can't be racist gary come on <laughs> You know what? He's probably right because he's black, so his opinion is makes means more. Yeah, I mean that's pretty like self sacrifice. He's like he knows himself so well, and he's like, listen, I can't let you fuck black guys because they'll ruin your pussy, and I have to deny my brothers your pussy. Really, that's self sacrifice, right? That there. is, you know. I think uh, there should be more prostitutes. I can see myself going back to, or not back. <laughs> I want, like, I can see myself doing pros, like, not not prostituting myself. <laughs> going back. That was a Freudian slip, bro. <laughs> I can see myself, like, if I ever got, like, you know, rich and famous, just being, like, having prostitutes, you know what I mean? Like, because it's just, like, you pay for it anyway, you know? In one way or another, you're going to pay for that shit. You pay for it usually more and having a healthy monogamous relationship. Your soul, yeah. you pay for it with your soul. You pay for it emotionally. Emotionally and um, financially too. Every which way you're going yeah. to pay. So why not just put fucking $500 put down? Put the money on the table, you know. Just be like, let's get this done. Be straightforward about but it. But I would make her like love me, you know, for the night. Yeah. yeah. I'd make her be like, I just need you to pretend that you really I like love that. me. You know, hold, like hold me. And, um, well, hey, maybe if they legalize prostitution, we could start a business. Dude, I could be down. Professional cuddlers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like we could be pimps. We could we pimp could, out. We could pimp out girls that cuddle with people, dude. You know people I mean? like that are just emotionally, de you know, deranged. Uh, Have you ever or, been on those web websites or um, well, which ones? Like the cuddle websites. They're hilarious. There's cuddle websites? There's professional fucking cuddlers, dude. Oh, I thought this was a unique idea we just came up no, with. No, no, no. And it's men, too, that come to your house <laughs> to cuddle with you. And what? they're all... Yeah, I'm going to look one up while I go on there. Um, And, uh, yeah, so what we could do is, like, hire... Like, pimp these girls out. But just to cuddle. You know Just what I mean? to cuddle. Yeah, and guys, too. But you're my best spoon, bitch. Where the fuck's my money? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> 
Yeah. I've and had this idea for a him. while, actually. I wrote a screenplay, a short film about this guy named, um, his name is Snuggles. And he's a pimp, right? He's got, like, golds and shit. And, like, he's just got a bunch of people that are his, his, his spoons, you know what I mean? And he's just, like, he's got a fat guy. He's got, like, a... A girl, like who's a like, brothel of spoons. Yeah, just different people. But that, but but not just all women. Though. I know. And there's these scenes where like one guy's like, I just can't do this shit anymore, man. I can't do it. He's like, bitch, get your shit together. You're a fucking spoon. One of my best spoons. And um, yeah. And it's just <laughs> that's pretty funny. I know, right? That's pretty funny. I what can you, make what it, it, What's the title? I, it's called Snuggles. But the whole the whole story is about it. it's a girl that goes out to LA and her mom doesn't want her to because she's like something bad happens to me out there, baby. I don't want you to go. She's, she's spoon, like, fuck baby. yeah, I'm famous. I'm gonna be famous. She's gonna become a spoon girl. <laughs> she doesn't know, right? And she goes out, right? And um, she meets Snuggles at the airport. That's where he would pick up his spoons. You know, he flip them, and uh, he sits next to him. And be like, what's up, girl? <laughs> and he like he he like tricks her to come over, and he like rapes her. But not really. He just like forces her to cuddle. He's like, you want to see what the product tastes like first, right? And, sh- and she's like screaming, no, please. And he's like, you want to fucking cuddle? <laughs> and they just cuddle. And she's like screaming, oh, God, I can't. Yeah, please stop. It hurts. And they're just, he's just snuggling with her. <laughs> and then like it ends with her calling her mom. you like, mom, it happened to me too. She's like, she got cuddled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's stupid. But like. I think you should call it the, the the word spoon should be in the title. Yeah, you know, like the I know, cuddling business. Snuggles the spoon pimp. Cuddling business, <laughs> and everyone listening, you should got you got to check it out. I mean, I want to be a professional cuddler. We tried professional cuddling. Here's how it went. <laughs> Book cuddle therapy cuddleist dot com, and they have like. So have you tried this before? No. I should though. It's getting yeah, to that point. One right now. It's getting to that point. Let's do it. Like have like a girl cuddling with me. Why would we do the podcast? Or what if I got like a guy cuddling with me as I talk to you? Or you, <laughs> or pay them to come cuddle and interview them. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandro, I know it to be true that there are a few things more life affirming than holding and being held by another. We are deserving of being met where we are. You gotta be kidding me, dude. To be listened to and to be understood. You might as well just call that rape.com. I want this for That's you. That's fucking ridiculous. He ends it with, I want this for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> You know these girls like are being cuddled with a guy and they're getting a boner. You know, there's no way a guy... Hi- oh, these guys are banging these chicks for sure. I thought that yeah. was assumed. Don't you think? I don't know. But look, find a cuddleist. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what this looks like. Oh, okay, okay. Um, state, uh, certified cutlass. Certified? How do you get certified? What the it's, fuck? You go to school forever. Sam, everyone is the lead protagonist of their own movie. <laughs> if you've hit a snag in your plot line, hey. I can be a minor character to help Let's you. Let's get her in the fucking screenplay. Would you want this guy to come over and cuddle with you? <laughs> Don. Can what you, is show, this guy, can you show, years can you show yeah, the, ca- here, the on, cameras? This will, this will probably be good. Will it show up? Don, if let's see what he has to say. What does Don have to say? Well, let's find someone that lives in Austin, Texas. But it's Don. Um, Don. I was going to say that he, we should get that lady to be in the screenplay because if she's talking about movies and shit, she already knows the deal, you know? Let's pay her. What? It, how much does it cost for an hour? I don't know. I assume it's per hour, like a regular prostitute. Yo, I'm here to cuddle, bitch. <laughs> this, isn't this fascinating, though? There's no yeah, one. Yeah, I never heard of this. Texas, there's five. And there's only five in the whole state of Texas. There's nothing in Austin. Okay, so think about this. Virtual cuddling. They could corner the market. If there's five of them. Irving, Texas. Look at John K. This yeah, guy that, comes over to your house I'm, to cuddle with I'm you. telling you, man. These people are all rapists. Look, Wait. Those, those five people could corner the market, though, so easily. If they got together and made a conglomerate of cuddles. It's just one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've, he's the only cuddler in fucking Houston, dude. Thing. He's cleaning up. He's the only cuddler in Houston. Dude, there, you know what's going to happen in five years? Hmm. All these backed up DNA rape test kits are going to come back and they're all going to belong to him. I would hire her. She's pretty cute. Yeah. No? Trained cuddlers. Not certified, though. I'm so happy you, in uh, capital letters, are here. Very likely, if you found me here, you understand the vital importance of authentic connection and nurturing talk. 
Let's see what her profile There's says. There's no way that she that's actually a real person. It's probably a Chinese snake oil salesman. Eighty dollars an hour, photo dude. Photocopiers or something. Eighty dollars an hour. Would, Eighty dollars an hour? Yeah, why would you not just pay a prostitute? My first That's experience what this is. these people probably are prostitutes. Did my I first I experience with Cuddleist was originally on the client side. She this bitch hired some guy to come over and cuddle with her. Let me see. Now who's this? She looks like a Kara. Yeah. What's her name? Amanda G. Yeah. Um, I experienced how a radical and rapid positive transformation, how I viewed myself in my <laughs> these people never been fucking laying next to someone before. I knew immediately that this was something special. It was scary too. <laughs> the hours, this isn't real, dude. The hours this before my real. first session, I was questioning myself for having made the decision and wondering <laughs> if the experience would even be worth my time and money. I came close to canceling and looking back, I'm so relieved I didn't. The, <laughs> the exponential growth I received through my cuddle sessions have permeated into every area of my life. Using, using the skills I've acquired from being on both sides of cuddleless, being a regular cuddle party attendee, cuddle parties. People are just so fucking sick, dude. We can create design for giving you a time, blah, blah, blah. That's an orphan turned prostitute is what that was all, all code for. Um, authentic. She probably, authentic relating facilitator. She probably does this for like, uh, fucking like couples and shit. She, she is getting fucked. That's what I'm saying. There's no way a girl is lying next to you. She's like, she's like, don't mind. I understand the boner, but the boner is more of a sign of you wanting to permeate into my chakras. <laughs> my heart chakra is open for your boner and my throat chakra. I was okay. I'll suck your dick for 40 bucks more. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Dude, when I was in Mexico, I got a deep tissue massage on the beach. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and I, and <laughs> is that what they call it? Ugly met. Well, I was there with my girlfriend at the time. So, so, I mean, it was a couple's thing. But uh, uh, I got I had this ugly Mexican, like, kind of, not butch, but, like, large-looking woman. You know, not fat. Those are the best kind. Thick. Yeah, she gave a good massage. She was strong. Did she blow you? Uh, no, I wanted her to, though. But, Did um, she eat your girlfriend out? No, she got a, a different per a different woman was massaging her. A guy or a woman? A woman. Are you fucking kidding me? Do I, I look like some sort of fucking queer? I know, I know, I know. I'm not letting a man massage my woman. I know. I, I actually did it once with my ex, and this dude came in, but he looked like so gay. I was like, oh, whatever. Fuck it. Oh, yeah. I was like, like maybe like Fernando or I was like, you mean, he like, when he was putting his dick in her, he was like, this guy looks gay. <laughs> there's there's no gay. way he's going to come. Yeah, I was like, there's no way. It means anything. You know? Well, so this lady named Maria gave me a massage, though, and the point I was getting at was that I did get a boner from this ugly woman, and I was thinking, you know, I mean. This is a breakthrough, Gary. We're having a breakthrough. Right <laughs> yeah, I, feel like, I feel like I'm in a therapy seat right now. The thought, the fact that you got a boner from a Mexican dyke tells me that you are dreaming much. Are you dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been having a lot of dreams about about cameras dude i go to 12 step meetings and i went on one last night do you like, really yeah I do. why this suck dude no -uh, man that shit's the shit oh not the fucking zoom ones uh <laughs> they have zoom ones bro I guess that's you don't understand surprising. like i was addicted to like hard drugs in my 20s brother, brother why do you think i'm like this? i'm from i'm from why do you think i understand you man i'm yeah. from dayton ohio dude yeah no my sister died from od drug town where my are you from Florida? Yeah. Originally. Yeah. You look like you're from Florida. I look like I'm from Ohio, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, my sister overdosed. I found her dad. And I'm, I was like, maybe I should do something about this drug problem. <laughs> yeah. But, um, like, uh, then my mom died, right? And and, overdosed too? Yeah. And I was like... So oh. that runs in your family then or what? I'm you obviously. can say that. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely runs in my family. And then I was like, I was in Florida and I was like, I'm going to go out to Seattle. I'm going to quit drugs. I'm going to go out to Seattle because there's no drugs out there, you know? And, um, Great decision. It turns out there are. <laughs> and, and before, and, and I remember like I was on a plane and like this French lady was next to me and she starts talking to me about, telling me about like AA and all this shit. And I was like, whatever, bitch, I'm going to just quit on my own because that's the way you do it. Because when I quit on my own, things are good. And AA is just another drug. And I get out there and I, and before I know I'm snorting like oxys off the fucking dashboard and my, like falling up my, 1984 Honda Civic with the hatchbacks broken and I was like maybe I have a problem you know like and I um just go to AA and yeah things got better because you basically just like give up you're just like fuck it my ideas aren't working you know 
And my life got way better. Well, if it works for you, it works for you. I'm not a drug addict, though, so. Yeah, yeah. You just do painkillers all day. Sciatica, brother. Yeah, I mean, pff. I think Kurt Cobain said that was the reason he shot up heroin. Is it really? Yeah, but <laughs> when they did, like, a t- autopsy, his um spine, they said, like, it did show that it was pinching a nerve that it was going into his stomach and shit. What? So, yeah, like, it was pinching a nerve. Are you being serious? He had a scoliosis. <laughs> he did. Really? That's why if you watch, if you see Kurt Cobain like performing live, when he goes, "I'm not gonna crack," he's talking about his vertebrae. Yeah, he's like, "No ch- chiropractor, I'm gonna," go. but like, no, because like carrying that guitar all the time, <laughs> no and he, chiropractor. And he was like skinny as fuck. Like really, he would wear like five sweaters because he was so fucking skinny. Because right. he was probably a woman. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I love Nirvana, but I think he was a woman. He was like, he had he, long hair too. I there was like I read his biography and like he was like Courtney Love talks about how she, he made out with like half the dudes in Seattle and shit some crazy shit. Yeah, you look at him; he looks gay as hell. Yeah, or it's just heroin that makes you gay. Yeah, it I, made me gay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I only did heroin twice. I snorted it. I actually that's funny you say that because let's get serious here. Let's do. We're just being serious. This is always serious. Yeah. I mean everything I'm saying right now. Yeah, it's not supposed uh, to be comedy or anything. When I grew up in Dayton, tons of heroin addicts, tons of overdoses, and a lot of them ended up becoming gay. I shit you not. Really? How do you yeah. become and gay? And meth, too. Do, I don't I, know why. I have a bit about how people are born gay. Like, I've seen... I don't believe that. Listen, this is the bit. I'm like... No, I don't believe it. Listen to the bit. It's like, <laughs> I believe that people are born gay... I used to work at this hospital, and I've seen them. I've seen those babies. <laughs> when they come out, they're just like, meh. <laughs> I, think I've, I think you've told me that one before. Yeah, like, meh. <laughs> did you do it on stage? Yet? I was here when I talked to, or, um, I did on stage once at The Riff, when I did that show, The Riff, um, and um, the show that I co-created. Um, Moving on. Yeah, anyways, um, that was when it was, yeah. Anyways, I'm not going to say anything about that it's not the same without me that's all i'll say anyways um what was where was it going oh and then i was and i talked about how like there's like a nipple like part where the babies like sip their bottle you know but it should be like a dick because baby some babies are gay they're born gay i believe people are born gay be, i don't i do because too i have a cousin he was gay as fuck since he was a little kid like he just wanted to watch the disney movies with my uh sister little sister and his sister and well, i would go out in the woods my friend my his older brother and we'd like fight in like big fuck tree goat, houses right. and shit fuck goats like do boy shit right. and he just wanted to watch like cinderella right <coughs> and like okay. his, and his mom caught him like dressing up and stuff like he was since he was a kid he was always gay let me let me counter that with this i think that they're so look dude i think that <clears throat> people are born with genetics that predispose them to homosexuality. Life experience can push people in that direction or in the other direction. And also, I think that um, culture, parenting culture, life experience, those three things sort of affect if people are gay or bisexual or not. But I do you think that people right. have I mean, pre, pre, predisposed. Because yeah. it's so weird how gay guys, they have that voice that's just like, right. it's th- like a woman. It's like a feminine, and they feminine talk, thing. And it, maybe it's like less testosterone. But I know feminine dudes that fuck... Yeah, a lot of isn't, dudes. Isn't <laughs> Is, no, isn't it weird when you meet like a guy that just you think he's gay and he fucks girls and he's like, so my girlfriend just like sucking my dick the other day. Well, those dudes have it have it easy because women love gay dudes and then when and they become friends with the with the dude that they think is gay, but then he's not gay, so they're like, oh, he's my best friend. Yeah, and, and he just slips it a, in them. He, he does whatever I say, and then th- but those dudes always end up getting fucking cucked in their relationship dude i i told them i told this one guy he was a couple it was a couple i asked if they were a couple and the guy's like no i'm gay I was like yeah right dude you're trying to fucking fuck that girl right now i can see in your eyes you're just gonna slip what did he say way. and he's like ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> he's like shut the fuck up dude he's like, dude shut up bro i'll buy you a beer shut up yeah i've, I've heard of it before the weirdest one weirdest a people, lot of gay dudes have fucked chicks though I had a friend who was gay and black, and it turned out he had HIV. It was weird. I was like, "Duh!" Like I didn't right. like, and, and um, I felt like it was the first time I met someone with HIV, and I, I felt bad because I was kind of like, I just stood away get from him. Get the fuck away from me! I know, but like, you can get even, that from touching him. I know, but like, <laughs> I just <laughs> no, I was kind of freaked out at first, but um, 
it made sense he was black and gay you know right it's like even you're just automatically have hiv even if you never had sex or is that how that yeah if you're black and you're gay you just have aids it's just simple as that that's uh, dr fauci said that adds up for me there's fucking variants in being gay. The variants are coming. You know that he was connected to some scandals with the AIDS movement. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> the AIDS movement. Fuck yeah, he Can't kept that he didn't like. Didn't he keep that shit like the HIV? And it's there's some there's some similarities because he kept the um he kept like the um it, they couldn't identify the virus in AIDS right forever right <laughs> and then. The ink some some English scientists did I think, but he kept it under wraps for a while because they couldn't market any sort of like medication for it first. He's all about money, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, what is his actual position? I think he's like the head of um, WHO. No, or the F F FDA, he, FCC. He's just the NWA. He's the head of um, NCAA. <laughs> I have no position here. <laughs> Listen, the mass, there's no point in him. I said that yesterday. Dude, to this that guy point. is a f- piece of shit. What's his net worth? You type in Fauci. No. 2.5 million. Oh, yeah. I bet after the vaccines come out, that'll raise. Um, if that's even what his real net worth even is. Oh, yeah. It's always offshore. Whoever Fauci he represents is, is worth billions, though. I mean, you can just see, it, like, I got into this a little bit. And then, of course, with the, the girl was liberal. So I knew I couldn't win the conversation. But NI National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, he is the director. I got into it with the vaccine about the girl. This is the girl with the vaccine. I was like, if it was a real vaccine, one, you couldn't get it again. Two, you wouldn't need all these fucking boosters, right? That's like saying, oh, you're going to need a booster for the polio vaccine. Like, yeah, you can have to get that. But like, because it's not complete. The whole point. And it takes years for that to be complete. Dude, but- did you get the vaccine? Me? Yeah, I know. It's a stupid question. Fuck no. But, like, um, it doesn't make sense that that's a real, like, vaccine. Because it was just so quick that they that's what I'm saying. They're not complete. It takes years and years to complete a vaccine. Right. It was not. And it's all for money. At first, I thought it was, like, you know, they're trying to kill people with it. But, like, I know people are <laughs> healthy. You know, they seem to be. Or they're, well. Until they flip the switch and the 5G radar blows their fucking brains out the back of their head. You ever listen to David Icke? Uh, I know who that is, but I don't listen to him. Dude, he's, he's fucking, on Infowars. He's fucking interesting, dude. Yeah. They, these guys like um, interviewed him on London TV, and he's like written like thirty books, and he's like, I've been talking about this for years. Five G fries your brain, <laughs> and he was and he was out on an island, right? <laughs> in like uh, I don't know the UK, or he was just on an island somewhere, and he wouldn't come back to. Like the mainland because they required a mask. He's just hanging out with spider monkeys yeah. in the bongo. So I will not go back. <laughs> I will not. I can't get the accent. So I will not go back to that fucking mainland <laughs> to England with the fucking face nappy. On me, you know? They called it nappy. Yeah, he's Dude, like, the English are so gay. He was like, I am not gonna. He, his whole point was he can't like preach this shit and not wear it so he's like i have to stay on this island now forever <laughs> he's just that he's that fucking like die but, hard but his about view it. of all of this is that there's a cult right in um the world that and we know it as the one percent right and it's a cult and they're Bilderberg group foreign and council affairs yeah uh, council on foreign affairs i'm yeah. sorry people like and, that is yeah and their goal is to create like a cashless um like technocracy right where basically um scientists um tech companies they're the rulers of the world right they and we are scientists tech and pharma yeah we are reduced to basically what do you think the mask does it takes away your identity Identity, yeah it's a total like psychological warfare yeah you can't even see people smile dude you know that's gonna fuck up babies and shit yeah, dude, my son lives in California. He's retarded now, probably. <laughs> you, you should probably not don't, even talk to him. Don't anymore. say that. Your son's... Oh, he lives in California? He's, he's not he's even... probably your, mutated into a lizard person already. Yeah, man. he's going to show up and he's like, Dad, where's your mass? <laughs> Dad, I need some Voss water. Dude, I, I, I'm going to I I'm gonna go out to New York. To, I'm doing Brooklyn Comedy <laughs> Club. Yeah. And uh, January 20th. <laughs> But um, <laughs> I asked my my uh, I asked my cousin if I could stay with her. Right? And she's like, "Are you vaccinated?" Yeah, of course. Yeah. You always lie. And I and I I was like, "What if I wasn't?" And she's like, 
well, you wouldn't be able to stay here, but um, we can hang out. I just have to spray you with this like bleach mist thing. I was like, what? Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm white enough, bitch. Like, I don't need that Ble- shit. She wants to spray you with bleach. She's probably the same kind of person that was making fun of Trump for saying you should inject bleach. She works for Viacom. Ah, oh! yeah. That's the biggest. That's one of the biggest propaganda companies in the world. I love her. What you say? I love her dearly, but she um she has different views than us. Do you know what I mean when I say that though? Yeah. Like entertainment is the is the propaganda wing of the government. She's high up. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's all China. China, like, what do you think? Like, China, do you think China owns the United States at this point? I mean, I don't think they do. They, they own they, fucking they Canada. Own, they own Hollywood. Like, why do you think Hollywood's whitewashed? The Chinese are the most racist people ever, right? They don't want to see, right? And they're the biggest consumer of Hollywood, right? They don't want to see that many black. Act- they don't see any black actors, right? Whatsoever. So even though we complain and we like fight to have more. Um, diversity in our movies is still mainly like Caucasian, right? Mm. It is. I think it's changing. But if like, what is the biggest movie that's been out here? I feel like I've just been like, I kind of came out to Texas and just just like disconnected from the world. What is a big movie? That's kind of how it goes out here. What it's is nice, big, huh? Yeah, I like it. What is the biggest movie out right now? I don't fucking watch mainstream shit, man. I don't know either. What is, what can the last thing you can think of? Fucking that. What's that fucking uh? Phoenix Marie on Pornhub. I was watching one of those the other day. No, like a, an actual <laughs> movie that was on. Like, I don't even know. I'm kidding. I I don't. I really don't watch movies, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, fucking because it's all garbage. Movie, movie theaters have been fucking gone for like a year or so. Like here, they're not. Ha ha. If you live anywhere else. Here, hold on. I'm gonna look it up. But um, yeah. But like box office hits going on right now. All right. And look Pornhub. at the main. And look at the main actors. I bet they're white. The Chinese, the Asian culture, they're they're obsessed with um, being white, right? It's a sign of a uh, um, affluence. Right, we got what do we got? Joe Bell with Mark Wahlberg. We got Jonah Hill, James Franco, Felicity Jones. True story. Matt Damon. Hereafter. These are all whites. These are all honkies. Crackers. Who the else? Headhunter. I don't know who's in that. Who else? The Drop with. Oh, two white guys. Wait, the drop. That's old though. Is it? Is that with? Uh, I just typed in new movies, bro. Wait, is that with um? What's his name? Uh, the blonde dude, or uh, I forgot his name. That played it. Tom Hardy, James. Oh, Gandalfini. that's old. That's a badass movie, by the way. I love that movie. Oh, because it's all white people. You yeah. would say that. Yeah, 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 racist. Yeah, no, that's a great movie. But like, that's not new. Anthony Mackie. That's a black guy in uh, the night before. That's, that's not new movie. Just put Come on, put dude. New, I typed all. I typed in new movies, man. Give me a fucking break. New over, re- new releases, not on Netflix, just on like um, new releases twenty twenty one, or new releases. True story. Yeah, that's that's new. Why hereafter? My theme. hereafter is not new. Oh, is it? Well, look. The point is, is that it's mostly white. You're Return right. to sender. It looks like I all, still do think look, it's changing. All though. of these people on the fucking cover are all white, and you know why it is. Because of the Chinese. They're obsessed. They bleach their skin, dude. Do you know what? that? Have you ever seen those Asian girls that take out part of their jaws to make their jaws, like, thinner? I know this one... Uh, what? Yeah, dude. I know this one Chinese girl who's, like, a little bit tan. She can't be a um, a leading actress. She's so they actress. bleach themselves because they're... It's a sign of nobility. They're, like, kind of tan and they it's bleach a, them. Yeah, okay, it's a I sign of affluency. Have you ever seen a lot of Asian girls with, like, the umbrella or something like that? On the beach and whatnot? Yeah, or any... Yeah, they... Bro, that shit is weird as fuck. Just just, be yourself. Dude, if you... You just need to be yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, in the end, when I'm like 50, I'm going out there, I'm just going to clean up. You know what I mean? Like, who wants some white cum? You know? (laughs) You want a white baby? Woo! Put it in your butt. So the Asians think that the whites are superior? Is that what you're saying? I don't think they think they're superior. I think they just love the way we look. Right? That's fucking bizarre. And it's... But if you notice throughout history... It's usually the fairer skin of the different cultures within the country. Like, there's always a conflict, and they usually rule. Right, 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 right. Like, and uh, this is even before like European rule and whatnot. Like, yeah, it, it's been around for a long time. I, it's weird. I don't know, understand why. I don't understand. It's why not you're... a white supremacy thing. I, I, no. That argument is is washed up and ridiculous. No, but no, no. It's... There is some sort of weird psychological. I don't know why either. Something, but if you look at like. Um, 
I think uh, in, uh, what is it called, where they had the big fucking genocide in Africa. What was the country? Ken- um, not Kenya. Zimbabwe? No. no, no. What the fuck? I can't even think. Um, they had some shit. There's some shit going on in South Africa right now. Oh, Rwanda. Rwanda genocide, right? Oh, oh. Okay. That was two different cultures, right? The, the Hutus and the Tutsis, right? And the French came in. <laughs> Or the Belgians, I think. I don't. I think it's French or Belgium. Belgium speaks French, right? And they came in and they fucking like favored one of them, right? Because of the color of the skin, perhaps. I don't okay. know, but they had more European features, like like uh, sharper noses and stuff, like sharper faces. And when they left the colonizers, there was a lot of bitterness from the other side, the other one, and they just. And I could be getting this wrong, but I know, or I could be getting like which one had those features wrong more but i know that they one group got slaughtered dude and there's some crazy stories too like of just like if you, you can read it like one guy talks about like i was out killing hoots uh tootsies all day and then i would just come home with all of the bloodlust done and eating food with my family fucking my wife after just slaughtering 30 people you know like they fucking killed everyone dude and um that's not right we need a genocide here we do like um, homeless people. <clears throat> I think there's a time and a place for a genocide. Like, you think like the homeless is where you where where you draw the line. Um, I think uh, people that shit on the sidewalk or in front of your house should be killed. People that don't care about other people, people that hurt other people, we should be able to kill people. I'm not saying to do it. Don't kill anyone. Don't. <laughs> but I'm saying like there. Genocide gets a bad rap. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm trying to find the funny in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. You know, like they always make it about like race or culture. It's like, what about if just like making based things, on making like, things like, right? What about the, <laughs> what if we made it moral, like a moral genocide, where it's like, listen, you know. <laughs> It's just based on character. That's if it. If you cancel someone, <laughs> if you, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, man, but like, I'm trying to fight, make a joke out of that, but like, um, genocide's a crazy thing. How do we get on this topic? Beats me, dude. But Fauci, yeah. man, I love, he's like, the variants are coming. We got the alpha and the omega, you know, <laughs> and it, I remember like Rand Paul, just railing him dude like um that porn i have no no um the i used to write erotica and that'd be a cool little story to write like Rand Paul fucking fauci like <laughs> shut the fuck up but um but when he like his deposition do you ever watch that Rand Paul just like being like you're a fucking opportunist why the fuck are you wearing a mask you have a vaccine and shit what kind of it's all for optics okay this is bullshit when are people gonna go back to normal he's like well there's variants coming and then after that they kind of like slacked and everyone could start taking their mask off a little bit. But what David Icke would say is like, he's like, what you're going to see is that there's going to be shutdowns and then they're going to roll it out and then they'll roll back and they'll think that, you know, Oh, we're getting out of the danger zone, right? Things are going to get better. And then they shut it down again. Right. Because they can't just keep it. You shut constantly or right. you're, you'll fucking rebel. So they give you a taste of like, Oh, it's going to get better. Right. Just something happened, so we have to get back to it, right? And that's basically what it does. They don't... And I think in Canada, they were even... It's, it's all, like, based on human psychology, basically. There was a fucking, like, meeting somewhere, like, the world leaders, which I knew fucking more detail, where they actually planned this out for the, to the T of how this would happen with the vaccine and stuff, I, or with the d- virus. It, was that with the Bilderberg group? Pops, possibly. I've re- I used to research this stuff a lot more when I was a journalist, but... You were I, a journalist? Yeah, that's how I got my start. No shit. Interviewing people, yeah. So you're from Texas? No, I'm from Ohio. Dayton, oh, Ohio. Yeah, you told me that. Dayton, Ohio. And when'd you, why'd you move here? When did you move here? I moved here from Northern California like like six years ago. When did you move to Northern California? That's like the worst place in the world for After you. After I lived in Southern California. <laughs> what? You're like, I just need more liberals? <laughs> no, I lived up... I lived inland. I lived up in conservative uh, Colorado Springs area. Uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, uh, what the fuck am I talking about? Um, Northern California in, uh, is beautiful. El Dorado Hills. Sorry. I don't know. What, uh, yeah, I don't know outside of the city. Um, nonetheless, it was inland of Sacramento. 
And I, I worked on like a weed farm up there, but it was like pro gun, pretty libertarian okay. about it. Didn't really give a fuck that nobody cared who fucked who and all that kind of shit. They didn't care about abortions. They were just like, I want my weed and I want my guns. Damn right. And which is kind of where I'm at with things. I don't, I don't give a fuck what women do with abortions. I don't give a fuck what who fucks who in the ass. Yeah. Why but, would I care? Why I don't? Why do people care about that shit? That's really weird to me. I know, and it's like, what's weird is the conservatives. It's like, why don't you let the liberals kill their children? <laughs> why do you want? It makes them? no sense. They're going to damn. They have to reproduce. We hate them. <laughs> Make more of them. Right, you right. make more of yourself because we hate you. Because the Lord has bestowed this privilege upon me. Yeah, it's religion. To tell you what you've got to do. But religion is... Bullshit. Religion, I think it's good to have value. There's great values in religion, like the principles of that they claim to espouse. But... It's so corrupted, though. Yeah, and the reason why, I think, is that something like God or like... Like, it's just irrational by nature, and that's what makes it so good. It's like, you can't understand something. If there is a God, which I believe there is, uh, I get all... He, God gives me most of my jokes, dude. Oh. I pray, and then I, all of a sudden I have this badass rape joke. <laughs> right. And, um, no, I, I pray for jokes and shit, and, like, he's like, here's a joke about beating women. He invented rape. If you like God, you like rape, pretty much what I'm saying. He, that's true. <laughs> I, I think rape. So I can't even watch rape in a movie scene, like seriously, because it's like guy. I don't understand why guys would rape someone, because it's like you're. Che- it pisses me off. Cause it's like you're cheating, dude. We had to fucking listen to these girls. We had to take <laughs> them out on a date. We had to fucking go through this whole process to have sex with them, and you just steal. You know, you play the fucking game. Yeah, you know? rape is kind of an uh, like I could. I look. Let's be honest here. If I had to, I could kill somebody probably pretty easily. I don't think I'd feel bad about it. I I could never rape somebody. Why not? It's just, it's fucked up. Killing somebody's not fucked up. Well, but this is, we're going to go down a slippery slope here, but justified homicide, I think, is no problem. Rape is, there's never, there's never, ever, ever, it's like child molestation. There's unless never they, a situation uh, yeah, where it's never Unless they won't acceptable. have sex with you. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. No, that's like, the Louis C.K. bit. It's, it's, <laughs> Louis goes, rape's horrible, you know, he's like, you know, but I mean, so, unless they're not, not, unless they don't have sex with you, what else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, it's, uh. Those are the two worst. I don't think murders. I have, yeah. I don't think it's as bad as rape or, or child molestation, in my opinion. I don't think murders. Yeah, are bad. I think people that rape or that molest children should be like killed. executed. Yeah, they should be executed or like neutered or something like that. Yeah, you know, a hundred percent and made an example of. Well, yeah, they were like women oh. and children are, are they can't defend themselves. Women aren't capable of defending themselves ninety percent of the time. There's some badass bitches out there that can that will fuck me up. Yeah, but most of them are pretty worthless when it yeah. comes to self defense. And kids are even worse. Yeah, you know, it's just it's fucked up. That's all. But I'm saying. Th- is what's weird is that they put like they're like we're gonna put this guy in jail and then he's not gonna like children when he comes out. It's like that's like putting. What if I'm a tit man? I like boobs. Right. When I come out, by the time you come out, you're not gonna like boobs anymore. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's like uh, what they're into. You know what I mean. <laughs> Put him in jail. He's gonna get ass raped for ten years. He'll come out. He won't. He won't want to fuck kids anymore. Yeah, he won't like weird. Yeah, weird. Now sex. he's got like a vengeance because he's like these kids did this to me. You know, it's their natural thing that they're into for some fucking reason. They that turns them on, which I never. Understood. Usually, I think it's because they were touched as a kid. I think a lot of this stems back to the Pope. Pope's fucking all these kids, and it's a big problem. So he's like the Genghis Khan that he Genghis Khan like fucked everyone, and made all the Asians. Yeah, I mean, usually if you, um, like, people that, like, uh, molest children and stuff, they've been molested. And it's like, why would you, you would think that you wouldn't want to do that, you know? Because like, it happened to you, you wouldn't want to do it to somebody else. But I think it's the reverse, the reverse effect or something. Like, oh, the world did this to me, I need to do it to somebody else. Because it's like, I didn't, yeah, it's like I didn't grow up having sex with women and now I want to have sex with women. <laughs> You know, like as a little kid, I wasn't like, my dad wasn't like, fuck all these bitches. <laughs> and then, and now I'm like, I'm just gonna have to, I love women, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's like a biological thing that they need to do. You think that's it? Or it's their biology, their fucked up biology. You think so? But you know, then again, who are we to say? Who are we to judge, right? Dude, that shit's been around forever, dude. You know, um, yeah, it's fucking gross, dude. I have a degree in um, literature, English literature, by the way, because I, I need money for drugs. You know I got my um, associate's degree in English? Yeah. 
That's why we're just two really smart dudes. That's why we're figuring out all these problems. Well, I'm used to writing, like, fucking constantly. They made you write all Yeah, you're a good writer. They make you write constantly. So, like, with comedy, I'm like, I can, I know how to write. And I'm used to, it's not a big thing for me to sit down every day and write. That was the good part about it. I think my professors would be kind of disappointed if they saw what I write nowadays. (laughs) Fuck them. Look at this one joke I wrote about um, fingering a girl underneath the bleachers. (laughs) Shakespeare was great, that class. But one Shakespeare was a fraud, by the way. There's there's a rumor that he like stole it from. There's another guy that um he wrote plays before Shakespeare and it was really raunchy. I forgot his name, but he was a playwright in the <laughs> four, 16th century. Shakespeare's kind of a stupid fucking name, huh? Shake Shakespeare. Yeah. You know, whatever. But anyways, Back in those days, women <laughs> couldn't perform on stage, right? So the little boys would play the women. And the aristocrats, or th- fuck them, they all had little boys with them, right? It was a sign of uh, nobility. You know what that, you know, that, you know where they still do that? Yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. Now they do it there too. Afghan dancing boys. Yeah, did you ever see that documentary? I never watched it. It's too fucked up. I, I can't, watched it I can't all watch the time. shit like that. I got a son, dude. I fucking love it. I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I watched it a little bit. Um, but like, <laughs> maybe like three times. No, Ugh. but I remember it. I remember watching it or some of it. I just remember like seeing like the dancing boys, right? And then like the old guys talking about this is my dancing boy. And that and that comes from a religion that is really you know, or so they say it's really misogynistic. They cover the women up. But you know what? I think Islam is just really gay. Dude, I think Muslims have it on point, the way they treat their women. They fuck little boys and cover up the women. They, they don't want to look at women. They want to fuck kids. That's fucking gay pedophiles. The, fuck, the fucking the kids part, no. Don't do that. But think about it, dude. What if we covered up all women? We made them like cover their faces up, right? And they couldn't go to school. Okay. They had to follow us you know, six feet behind, which is weird because now it's like... That was part of their... I, I knew a girl... Interesting. When I, six feet. When, when in like high school... What does when, that remind you of? I know my friend's sister was Saudi Arabian, which is the worst place for women to go out like Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And she yeah. would have to go out there, cover shit up and be six feet behind the men. I thought it was awesome. You know, it's it like, be interesting about, to experience what if that you had culture? a wife, she's all covered up. Right. And then at night you take her home and you unwrap her like a present, you know, like, babe, I haven't seen you all day, even though you've been with me all day, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but there would be less. Jealousy. I missed you so much. Fuck. Yeah. There'd be less jealousy. Fuck. There'd be less like, um, are you cheating on me or anything? Because you circumcise them. It's just like it works out. Well, the good news is is that you're accepting of other cultures. I think women are. But the problem is women are very xenophobic. They don't accept the Muslim culture, and they should look to that culture. Well, that's now. that's Islamophobic too. Really, I mean, yeah. That's but you know that's how women are these days. They just. They're really, they hate Muslims. For They're not reason. open. They're very anti-Muslim. Yeah. All women. Uh, what, I mean, why, I how it. did they get like that? You know, you, you, one would, one would wonder, <clears throat> ponder it, you know? I don't know. I think it's because like, <laughs> they don't like rugs because they have to like clean rugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's exactly what it is, man. You're totally the right. Magic I don't even need magic to look that up. And shit. I don't need to do any research to know that that is exactly what it is. We sh- like women... Are, and I've become very resentful towards women lately <laughs> with certain things. You that, and me both, brother. Well, certain things that have happened to me, I've had like a whole crew going after me. Yeah, you got the, you got, you got a, hey, you got your work cut out for you. <laughs> yeah. I have a whole crew in Austin that are like trying to destroy me and they can't because I'm me. But they, um, <laughs> no, but I've been resentful towards women because everyone I've, every one of them I've dated, they've been horrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of uh, unfortunately slipping into the same shoes here, dude. My dad, it's like bad relationship think, after bad yeah. relationship, and I'm not, I'm not doing anything fucked up. To, <sighs> That's the thing. It's like you, uh, like you get treated like even though you never really did anything fucked up, you get treated if you do one thing that they don't like. Oh, you blew up her phone because you're having a fight. All of a sudden, you're an emotional. Oh abuser. well, that never happened. To me, but y- you know what? Like sometimes I yell. You know, I can be kind of loud. I never yell. Whatever, really. dude. I'm going to become Muslim. I'm really calm whenever I fought with a girlfriend. I just you wanna... <laughs> But I use my words just to, like, you know, um, like, fight. I'm just like, fuck you, bitch. No. <laughs> no. I, but um, where are you going, Carrie? I'm just looking at 
But what was I going to say? I think so I was just looking at the time. Women, the clock's covered. They fuck themselves. They used to not even have to get a job. They could just stay home, chill with their, you know. Yeah, I've also thought volume, about that as well. Vacuum, take value, play with their kids, dude. That is what I want to do. I, yeah, this is what this is my away. dream. Let me tell you my dream, Ryan. My dream life is to take pain pills, completely kick booze, don't drink anymore at all, don't smoke cigarettes, maybe have the occasional coffee, and just take painkillers for my sciatica, and hang out with my son, have a brothel of whores, and maybe vacuum it can occasionally, be and, and do podcasts it with all my done. good friends. That's what I fucking want, and I don't think it's too much to ask for. Can can you yell on um the pod and it'll be okay? You know, uh, have you ever seen that meme about uh, <laughs> how come boys can't go to therapy? I fucking hate this meme. How come boys can't go to therapy? They need to start a podcast. <laughs> it's because therapy is totally bullshit. In my opinion. Yeah. I don't believe in AA well, or therapy. I do think AA works for some people, though. So I, You I will, can get I'll, therapy I'll in be, so many ways. So many well, I'm just are. saying, like, there, I think, I, it, I think, is it not obvious? What, it, what, is, what, is, what, is, <laughs> what is therapy, dude? Dude, I've seen you take four of the, oh, you got to do a pot. These uh, are a mints. Fucking, These are mints. Oh, uh, you got to do your uh, ad read. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this um, this uh, episode is brought to you by... The best company in the world. Um, he's talking about women and how they have problems. I think their problems could be solved if they were more clear-headed. If they realized, hey, we fucked up by asking to go to school and to vote, right? We could have just be home. And, you know, when when men were fighting in World War One, that's when women were at their peak. Because they were at home playing with the hens. They were at home, you know, holding themselves like this. Just being like, when is Johnny going to come home? That's where women want to be, and I think modafinil could help you get that way. Modafinil is something I have a great fondness for, <laughs> and um, it no, dude, dude, it's really changed my life. Like when I started taking it, my writing got better. Like I was just like, maybe I should take some for my sciatica. Yeah, or just do heroin for that. But like, <laughs> modafinil is not a drug. Well, it's it's a drug, but it's not like it doesn't other get, drugs it doesn't get you high. It wakes you up, right? Right. This podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Modaf, <laughs> the company that I love. They have a great, like, th- by the time it gets to you, and actually, they do they have now, like, America to um, USA to USA shipping, right? It's starting up where you can, like, order it and get it within a few days, right? Which is unheard of because it used to take fucking 30 days from the Indians to get their shit together. And it's always <laughs> like, oh, um... Because of COVID, you know, it's been two years. COVID has affected our mailing. Not anymore, motherfucker. Okay? You get a shit in two days with modaf.org, uh, I believe. <laughs> yeah, modaf.org. Modaf.com. Well, I know, like, where you want to go is modaf.org slash Ryan for a uh, discount because you get, like, 50% off on orders over a certain amount, I believe. And, um, yeah, it's... Um, let me like find that whole spiel. Keep talking, Tom or Tom. Keep Dude, talking. You just Gary. call me Tom. I'm sorry, I called you another man's name. Oh, uh, here I'm gonna plug my thing real quick while you find that. Check out the Gary Bobby Show. It's the podcast that I host with Bobby Flacco, Flaco. I mean, of Nether Hour, the frontman for Nether Hour. It is on the Faust TV YouTube channel, and it's on Instagram at the Gary Bobby Show. We put out promos weekly that are like kind of fucked up, crazy commercials. Honestly, the commercials are better than the show, but the commercials are really fucking good, so I'm not knocking my own show. The show is live every Thursday at 9 a.m. Check it out on Faust TV. Also, you can follow me and my endeavors uh, on Instagram at Gary R. Faust, G-A-R-Y-R-F-A-U-S-T. Did you yeah. like that promo I showed you earlier? Was it funny? Uh, Yeah, I liked it a lot, actually. I thought it was really funny, especially um, the guy falling off the roof and you guys... I thought it was really funny. Yeah, there's a lot of death in our promos. Yeah. Um, death I, is very funny. I mean, the dark stuff is what makes people laugh. And the people don't... Because I've studied laughter. Like, I actually look at, like, um, like studies they've done on what laughter is. And um, before... Wait, before I get into that, listen. I don't have the spiel they gave me. 
because they told me to say certain things. It's just a great company. Oh, go man. to it. Don't go to the other ones because it's just bogus. They actually depend on modaf.org to get their shit. You know, this is the original, the one. And um, there's a lot of bullshit online where you can get some, like, the wrong thing. And there's only a few um, that you can trust. And modaf is definitely one of them. Um, modaf.org slash Ryan. You get a discount. And, um, yeah, it'll really help you, especially if you got daytime sleepiness. If you got um, uh, motivation problems, you got... Uh, like you can't concentrate or you just feel like your life is really hard. Like when I take that shit, like I just working is not even work to me. It's like, oh, I just have to go on and do this, or whatever like that. And it, it really is a great drug. And I stand by it. It's clean. If you don't like if you stop taking it, you'll go. There's no side effects or anything like that. And um, yeah, when I run out, I just run out and I'm good. <laughs> um, but I never run out <laughs> because. I'm their poster boy. But yeah, modaf.org slash Ryan. M-O-D-A-F dot org slash Ryan. Right here, you can see the, the link, right? Yeah, did it just... The more you know. I might make a... Put a little sound effect in there. Yeah, like, remember, like, the more you know? Like, the MECs? The more you know. It goes, the more you know. Yeah. I want that. Let me do something like that. Modaf.org. Anyways, um, yeah. So what was I saying Um, about... Fuck, what was I just saying? About, I don't know, but we're about, it was about an hour. It was about women, right? Oh, uh, no, it was about laughter, comedy. Oh, you were studying laughs. Like, there's there's a couple um, uh, theories. One theory is, like, back the, back in the day, the caveman, they would, if they heard, thought there was a saber-toothed tiger outside, right, in the bushes, one guy would go out and check, right? Everyone's freaked out. Like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? He goes, checks in the bushes. It's not there. And he would use laughter to signal to them there was no danger, right? That was the release. You know, and they would know. And if you look at it like a joke, it's got like a really tense premise set up and then punchline. You're like, ah, oh, you know. And um, another theory is that men developed uh, humor to show women how fun. To get laid, yeah. Yeah. To, That's what I believe. Because it's a sign of intelligence, right? Yeah, you have to be smart to be witty to be funny. Yeah, and women use that. That's why... It's weird when a woman's funny because it's like you should be on an island banner. There's some like funny women. There is. A handful. You know. Uh, but they're probably trannies. Oh. Okay. Think about all the women you fuck that are probably trannies. That they just like hid their dick somewhere. I I, I read this thing. Uh, maybe it might have been from Tucker Max, the guy that wrote uh, Serve Beer in Hell or whatever it was. And I think he said something like, if you've had sex with 200 women in your life, you've fucked probably one tranny. Which is possible. Um, I've known a lot of guys that have done it, and they just act like... Dude, one time I was riding... This guy gave me a ride to a show in L.A., and he goes, man, I had sex with a tranny last night, like, without a condom. It was fuck. I was like, did you want to die and get AIDS or some shit? He's like, oh, no, she has AIDS, but she's on that medicine. Prep. Yeah, I was like, all right. So, one, fuck. you, trust, you, line, one, you trusted her, it, or him, or to that they're taking the medicine correctly. Well, you know what they're calling? You know what they're Two, using now? You're trusting that drug. And it, there's probably a 1% chance or 2% that it doesn't work. That's two good points. Did you know that there's a new pronoun that, that uh, people are using? It's knee and ner. What does that Instead mean? of he and her or something like that. What is knee, knee and ner? You can't invent your own fucking word. No, I'm just saying. They do that? Doesn't that sound an awful lot like a word that we're not supposed to say? Knee and just saying. Really? I was talking to Ben Bankus about that, and it's really just strange how people are just making up their own like, pronouns. But what is that? What is a ner? A her? I don't fucking get it, dude. You think I understand it? I'm a good old boy, Ryan. Yeah. We don't know pronouns. I don't understand any of this shit. We never learn pronouns. Shit. God damn it! There's so many pronouns. I wanted to like put like slash it or slash her, but like, they only let you put him, her, or something. I wanted to find... I think you can start making them custom now on Instagram. You can say like... F A and then G O T. You know what I'm saying? Uh, got <laughs> or am I gonna get in trouble for saying that? Um, you think I'll get in trouble for saying that? No. Or you can be like Mister slash it. I say fucked up stuff all the time, but the guy who introduced me to the media what, industry fag was like, for saying faggot. Yeah, I don't know if it's really that big of a deal. Uh, Since I became a comic, like faggot and cunt are part of my vocabulary. Yeah. Now. Well, I say fucked up stuff all the time too because well, I'm not a. Com 